All right, this is going to cover the question number four on lab. What lab is this? Yeah, question number four on lab five. Uh, from last week, it seemed that a lot of people were still struggling with this. And if you are still struggling and you get done with all the experimental values, by the time you get to question four, you're going to have absolutely no clue. Now, I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. I tried to do a little bit at the end of the last video on lab 5, but I just don't think that was enough. Now, for lab 5, uh, for lab five question 4. If a fifth resistor of 10K was added below R4 in figure 5.2, how would this alter VAC and VB? Show your work. Well, let's start by drawing figure 5.2. Figure 5.2 is... Don't go to sleep, computer. One, two, three, four. Positive side, and I need something along these lines. Just gonna All right, so you have R one, R two, R three, R four, and the values of these are. I think I've been doing values in green, so I'm going to continue doing that. Hopefully it isn't too, there isn't a glare spot on anything. Good. So, spots to avoid are this and that. Anyway, R1 is 1K. 1 kilo ohms. 2.2 kilo ohms, 3.3 kilo ohms, and finally we have 6.8 kilo ohms, as well as this over here is what 20 volts? 20 volts. important thing for this particular operation is Ohm's law. So, V is equal to resistance times current. We know our voltage. We have a general idea of what our resistance is going to be. We know we don't know our current. So how do we find our current? Uh, that should do. Our current is equal to V over R. With V over R, uh, with our current established, we have I is equal to V over R. I should write that better. I is equal to V over R. That's going to be important. But what is R in this case? We have a fifth resistor of 10K, so we do need a fifth resistor. R5, this one over here is going to be 10K. 10 kilo ohms. If you recall from, from uh, the operations that you did for table 5.3, R was the sum of all of the resistances. So in this case, what is V? V is equal to 20 volts. R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. And in this case, since we have an R5, plus R5. How do we know that R5 is in series with everything else? All the current, where's my blue marker? All of the current that comes out of the positive terminal over here has to go through R1, has to go through R2, has to go through R3. 
has to go through R4, has to go through R5. And that, that back into our power supply. Or current source, whatever you want to call it. So we now have a 10K ohm resistor for R5. In this case, it's 1, R is equal to 1K plus 2K, 2.2K. Let me just draw that out. This is also equal to R is equal to 1 kilo ohm plus 2.2 kilo ohms plus 3.3 kilo ohms plus uh, 6.8 kilo ohms plus 10 kilo ohms. Therefore, R is equal to as if you bear with me a second, and unfortunately I'm not going to have a whole, time, a whole lot of time to edit this one. I'm not even using a microphone this time around. 1 plus 2.2 plus 3.3 plus 6.8 plus 10. That is equal to 23.3 kilo ohms. Because R in this case, since they are all in series, is the sum of all of the resistances that are in series. Uh, when we don't have a resistance, a resistance that is in series, uh, things get a bit more interesting. Anyway, this is our R. Now that we know what our R is, we know what our voltage is. Can we figure out our current? No, well, it's quite simple. I is equal to V over R, which is equal to, if you remember this, I is equal to V over R. V over R. What is our V? V is 20 volts. That one they gave us. What is R? We figured out R by summing all of the resistances. In this case, it's 23.3 kilo ohms. Uh, and this would be 20 divided by 23.3 to the times 10 to the power of 3 is equal to somewhere in the order of, uh, let's just say we have two sig figs in this one that is uh, 860 microamps or we have How do I write this down? We have 0 0.00086 volts over ohms. Now, is that in focus? No, that's close. So, you plug that into a calculator, you get something along these lines. 0 0.000, .000 Eight six volts over ohms is also equal to one two three one two three so this is equal to eight hundred and sixty times ten to the negative six times ten to the negative six is equal to a micro so micro amps and micro is the Greek letter mu uh, these markers are too thick, I can't really write that down properly. You'll see it. Or it'll also be 0 0.86 milliamps. Either way is fine, really. But if you want to write it down in engineering notation, you would be looking at microamps. Now, with all of this in hand. We have what our current is. I'm going to go ahead and erase everything else. Uh, 10 minutes. So we have our current I is equal to 860 micro amps. Now, 
we are being asked to measure the voltage. If a fifth resistor of 10K was added below R4 in figure 5.2, so R5, how will this alter VAC and VB? Where is the red one? All right, so where is point A, B, C, D, Yep, that is where it matters. That is where, rather, those should go. Now, a point of convention. Whenever I say the voltage of A, the voltage at A, rather, I am talking about the voltage of A with respect to ground. Whenever there is only a single letter down here, that is, with the positive probe here and the negative probe at ground. I should this. So, so in order to measure VA, I would do something along these lines. Positive probe up here, positive probe on ground. If I said measure V A B that is two points so your red probe always goes on the first point and then your second probe always goes on the second point in this case since we don't have one there it defaults to ground if there is nothing over here following the first designator you go over to ground if there is something else you go to that so VAB is that if I say VR2 now, there is only one thing here, but that thing, that is, that subscript, is not a point. That is a component. So whenever somebody says VR2, they are asking for the voltage across R2. So, you probe across R2. If you were to say the voltage of V. D, you would probe positive lead on D, negative lead on ground. If somebody were to go V, A, C, it would be positive lead on A, negative lead on D. A, C. So, A, C. And if somebody were to say VR3, positive lead, you would probe across R3. That is what these, that is how you measure that. I don't remember covering that in the, the main video for lab, six, uh, lab five. Uh, well, now we're being asked about the voltage at Oh, we're being asked about VAC and V at B. So let's start with VAC. What is, if I'm measuring this voltage over here from A to C, what am I measuring? I am measuring the voltage drop of this resistor and the voltage drop of this resistor. And what is voltage? Voltage is I times R. So, VAC, let me write this over here, VAC is equal to our current I, whatever I is, times R1 plus I times R2. So it would be the voltage of this resistor and of this resistor. There is also a very simple thing that you can do over here, and that is simplify. So you can factor out I. VAC is equal to R1 plus 
R2 times I. We know what R1 is. We know what R2 is. We know what I is. We already found that. So, that is what BAC is going to be. I'm not going to do the calculation. The trickier part is... Well, not exactly trickier. It's just a bit more, more of the same. Is VB. If I were to grab my probes and... How do you measure VB? Positive lead over here, positive lead on ground, or over here. So we do the same thing. What is VB? VB is equal to the voltage of R2, the voltage of R3, the voltage of R4, the voltage of R5. And for this one, I'm going to need a bit more space. Because as I write it out, V at B is equal to I times R2. Because if I probe here, I am probing this R2, R3, R4, and R5 plus the voltage of R3 plus the voltage of I times R4 plus the voltage of R5. We can do the same thing again. VB is equal to, we can factor out I. I times R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5. That is going to be VB. That is going to be, and if you notice, this over here is simply the sum of all of the resistances. So this is equivalent to having a circuit. You're trying to figure you have you have an unknown voltage. You have a known resistance, which is R2 plus R3 plus R4. Four. Damn it. Plus R5. You have this resistance over here, and you have a current I, which is that over there. What is going to be your voltage? Well, again, what is going to be your voltage? Your voltage is I times R. R in this case is not any in the, any single one of these, but it is all of them. So let me cover V. That really says V. Uh, I times R. I times R. This over here is VB is equal to. I times R. What is R? In this case, R is the total sum of all of these resistances. R is the sum of all of these resistances, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Once you get that, remember, that is micro, 10 to the negative 6, not milli as we have been working with. You will be able to find VB. And that will tell you, compared to the data that you figured out on this table, whether it went up, whether it went down, and how it compares. Consider the circuit R2 or... No, it's over here. Oh yeah, and you can also use this. This is going to tell you about the current. Did the current go up? Did the current go down as you added more resistance? And I think that's pretty much it. All right.